Hi guys, making this quick video to introduce you to a technique that'll help us figure out a little bit more about the molecular formula in terms of structure. It is termed the index of hydrogen deficiency, the degree of unsaturation, or the double bond equivalence. All three of those terms are synonymous. What this technique does is allows us to see how many double bonds, triple bonds, or rings may be in our compound. And the first thing we have to do is look at our saturated compound. A saturated compound is one that has all of the possible hydrogens on it, and it does not have a ring. And so if we look at some compound that has n number of carbons, in order to be saturated, the number of hydrogens would have to be 2n plus 2. If we look at the example on the bottom, we see that over here on the right is ethane. Ethane has no double bonds, no rings, and it has all the possible hydrogens that it can. And so we have C2, and to be saturated, our number of hydrogens has to be 2N plus 2. And so that's the case here. 2N plus 2 would be 4 plus 2, which is 6. And so that is our saturated compound. If we look over on the left, however, we see ethylene, which is C2H4, and it does have a double bond. And so it wants to be C2H6 to be saturated, but it is not, it is C2H4. And so because we are missing two hydrogens, that means we have one degree of unsaturation or one double bond equivalence or one index of hydrogen deficiency. Because each time we have a double bond or a ring, two hydrogens are lost. And so this compound right here, would be one degree of unsaturation because it has a double bond. If we want to talk about molecules that have halogens, then we simply replace the halogen by a hydrogen. So anytime we have a halogen, it really just replaced a hydrogen. Each halogen is bonded to our molecule by one bond, just like a hydrogen, and it would replace a hydrogen. And so if we had C4H6Br2, what we're going to do is equate that to C4H8. And so if we talk about how many degrees of unsaturation that would be, we go to our saturated compound, which would be C4H8910. So that would be our saturated compound. But in fact, we only have eight H's. So we take 10 minus eight, which is two, and then we divide that by two, and that gives us our one degree of unsaturation. So halogens are simple. You just add the halogen to the H's. Oxygen is even easier because when we have an oxygen on our molecule, it actually extends out to one hydrogen. So whenever we have an oxygen in our molecule, we can ignore it in terms of degrees of unsaturation. So this molecule right here, C5H8O, C5, if we were going to do our saturated molecule, would be C5H101112. But what we have is eight. And so we subtract eight, so that's four. And then we divide by two because there's two hydrogens every time we close a ring or have a double bond. And so that would be two degrees of unsaturation. So with halogens, we simply add them to the hydrogens and with oxygens we ignore it. So when we have nitrogen in our compound we have to do things a little bit different and that's because we have two hydrogens attached to each nitrogen. So in the end what we have to do is remove a hydrogen. In the example below C5H9N if we were going to make that a saturated compound that would be C5H12 that's the saturated compound. So if we take that 12 and subtract from it the nine that we have, and then subtract an extra one for the nitrogen, this ends up being eight. So then we end up with 12 minus eight, which gives us four, and then divide that by two. And so we end up with two degrees of unsaturation in that compound. So to summarize, the first thing that we do in order to determine degrees of unsaturation is calculate the saturated compound. Separately, we will determine the number of hydrogens on our molecule. So we start by adding all of the hydrogens plus all of the halogen. We can ignore oxygen and we're going to subtract one hydrogen for each nitrogen that is in our molecule. Once we have that sum of the hydrogens plus the halogens minus the nitrogens, we subtract that value from our saturated number of hydrogens and then divide by two. If we try these two practice problems, we start with C7H12. If you look at our saturated molecule for C7, it should be H14 plus two, that'd be 16. 
so h16. So we take that 16, subtract from it the 12 h's that we have in our molecule, and that is 4. We divide by 2, and that is 2 degrees of unsaturation. So now if we do the more complicated example, C8H11BRN2O, to do our saturated compound, we have C8. H would be 18, so we have C8H18, and we take that 18 and we subtract from it the hydrogens that we actually have in our molecule. So what we have is 11 hydrogens and one halogen, and so we add those, and then we subtract two for the nitrogens, and then we ignore the oxygen. So the value there is 11 plus one minus two is 10, we take the 10 actual hydrogens and subtract it from the 18, which is our saturated. That gives us eight, we divide by two, and so we end up with four degrees of unsaturation for this compound.